Welcome to Broadcasters, the podcast dedicated to bringing you the latest news, insights and expert opinions on conversational AI, chatbots, voicebots and the future of innovation in this field. We are proud to announce that we are working together with the European Chatbot Conference in Edinburgh and we will be interviewing interesting speakers. We want to provide independent and objective knowledge for our community, share real-world successes and failures and connect people with the expertise that they need. It has been a great and fun journey so far. A big shout out to all the experts that were on Podcasters and shared their expertise and vision. Be sure to subscribe to the Podcasters podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and follow us on social media. Hope to talk to you at the European Chatbot Conference in Edinburgh. See you soon. Welcome, Harald Felgner. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, and welcome on the show. Um, Harald, please introduce yourself. So my name is Harald Fegen, uh, which is a German name. So I'm an expert in in Switzerland working with AXA Insurance. So uh, AXA Winterthur Insurance, as it was called. Uh, We were acquired by AXA in in 2007. So, But as an insurance, we are a separate entity in each and every country. So insurances cannot be sold globally. So they are always within the borders of a country. And I'm Digital Experience Innovator in a team that is called Interaction and Multi-Experience Solutions, where we do different different solutions, different digital solutions, apart from the chatbot, which I'm going to talk about in Edinburgh. Uh, chatbot Ada, we also offer the mobile app experience for Access Switzerland and several other applications. Uh, also concerned with chatting with humans, our advice staff, as well as... Um, Customer care stuff. I'm really happy to hear that because uh, that means that your uh, AI or chatbot, voicebot efforts are not standalone. They, they are incorporated. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Now, at the summit, you are going to talk about, and it's a very long title, benefits and limitations of large language models for chat and voicebots. Now, that, that's a long title. Um, could you explain to us what we're going to learn and hear from you? So it's a long title and it's two people speaking, actually. So it's Daniel Bietenharder from Custom Operations as well as me. And we are, we are talking about our journey during the last four years since we launched our intent-based chatbot ADA, Access Digital Assistant, which works in four languages, actually, in the four languages we need in Switzerland. Switzerland. And uh, this existing chatbot is intent-based. It's a it's a based on on Microsoft Bot framework, and it's a combination of a click bot as well as a free text entry bot with answers. But as we are in insurance, uh, our answers are always complicated, or they result in follow-up questions because no customer actually can 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 know what to tell us beforehand. So if he, for example, has a glass claim, so so my window is broken, then we have to ask back, yes, yeah, sorry, but is it a car or is it a building? And if it's a building, do you own the building or are you just renting the building? So it's always complicated, and that's why our existing chatbot is a combination of, of clickbot as well as natural language understanding bot. On an, in the meantime, old technology, Microsoft Lewis and and Q&A, and only in German up to now. So that's one of our challenges here in Switzerland, that we have to not only offer German, but also Italian, French, which are local languages. Switzerdeutsch. Switzerdeutsch, which is sort of German, but it's spoken differently. So when you offer a voice bot, it's completely... I speak a little. I speak a little German as a Dutch guy, but okay. uh, I, and I come in Switzerland regularly. And the Switzer, even if you speak German, and you're like, this this is like a Russian or or something. And it's not Russian, but um, uh, it's hard to understand. And it goes so fast that uh, um, I imagine a voice bot will have a hard time uh, uh, getting it. Absolutely, and and. When I was, I'm an expert from, expat from Germany, so when, as soon as I entered Switzerland from Bavaria, which is not the, the, the country next or the, the region next to Switzerland, so I wasn't able to understand the people here, so they always have to switch to their high German, which also sounds Swiss, but it's, is a different language. And even when texting, 
people use in their private conversations uh, dialects. So they text dialects, and those dialects are different in each and every valley. So that's one of the challenges. And the, the current intent-based uh, Microsoft Bot Framework um, chatbot we have, we, we couldn't scale it up beyond German. So German is the, the 70% of the population, German-speaking, and so we started with that one. And um, it's, we weren't able to scale it up with a small team of people developing it and then curating content by hand. So that's why we are really looking forward to large language models being able to handle language really well. Yeah, and I can imagine. The, the cost savings and the, the, the speed at which you can develop uh, is uh, um, unparalleled. It's unparalleled. And we were doing first experiments really also uh, using the, the most difficult dialect to understand for German-speaking Germans. So that's a dialect from, from uh, Valais, Le Valais. I don't know the English name, actually. So it it's one of the cantons where they speak French as well as German. And then there's a border within the canton. And uh, when you there ask uh, for for a pension solution, so may I go into into my pension two years early? It's a really, it's a it's a it's a phrase that looks like Finnish actually. So to, <laughs> and uh, the the current uh, ChatGPT models were able to understand the question, not being able to answer in 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 Valle German, but uh, being able to answer in High German then. Well, that's at least something. You, you, you know you're getting closer to a solution. Absolutely. That's, uh, but uh, um, let's take one step back. Um, um, are you already working with the large language models? We are only experimenting with the large language models. I, can you, now, so. I understand you work for a large corporate with, uh, uh, and you're, you're listed in the stock market, so there are things you can say and things you cannot say. I understand that. Um, but could you take us on a, a little bit on the journey um, it, because even for experimenting with large language models, there's this, uh, you need the board to be literally on board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's this strategic aspect of uh, long-term commitment for experimenting um, and eventually uh, uh, taking it into your operation. That means building a team, having enough funding, uh, uh, not just for the short term, but for the long term. And could you explain us how you do that within AXA without disclosing things you can't disclose, I understand. But that, that, that's interesting because it is, uh, I see so many people struggle with that because, oh, it's a hype and it shouldn't be treated as a hype in my opinion, but uh, yet uh, everybody's doing it. We need to do something. So I see bad technology decisions. I see uh, bad team decisions. Um, um, people think they know, and so they don't hire external help from people who actually know. Um, so they make very expensive mistakes. So I, I see all these things, and I understand you guys are doing it, well, maybe a little bit different. So please help our listeners and viewers. So, so when we started four years ago, still not large language models back then, uh, it was... I mean, we, we do a lot of innovation projects with the NUXA. I can disclose that. There's hackathons uh, over three days for the whole company. Everyone who wants to, to participate can participate with an idea and then also work on that and then present even to the, to the board. Um, and there's regular monthly innovation days. In, in, in one of those projects, we started with the, with the chatbot, which was no issue back then, no issue compared to what we are now facing with the large language models, because it was only a clickbot. Uh, I mean, it was publicly available data, and we were able to do experiments and even go live onto the axa.ch homepage, which was easy. So um, you had full control. That's also the difference. We had full control back then. So now, um, on, on one hand, those large language models are a solution for that language problem we, we face in the meantime. On the other hand, it's really getting more and more difficult. So, for example, for a month ago, I can disclose that we were quite near to, to also publishing a first innovation experiments live. I mean, we can disclose. This is only an experiment. If you really want to, to trust the answers, um, go somewhere else. So onto the webpage, we have, I mean, we have links. 
in, in those, in those uh, conversation answers. Um, but in the meantime, I may disclose that AXA on a group level really has become, um, well, they, they are not, they are not pushing it, let's say it like that. So, so it's, it's, it might become more complicated. A bit careful. Than a bit, bit careful. more careful. Absolutely. Uh, which, which I can imagine because there's so many, uh, how should I say this, fuck ups. Um, yes. and, and mistakes and, and problems and, and they pop up and it's an insurance company, you, you know, you're regulated so that you have no choice. Yeah. And if you do fuck up, you have a problem with the regulator in any country. So I, I, I come from insurance business, so I, I totally understand. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you'd say that they're more careful. Does that have impact on the budgeting or do they say, you know, please experiment enough so we understand what we're doing and we have control? Uh, experiment more and don't give into production yet. So it, it's really a hard wall. So when we applied for that speech in, in Edinburgh, my colleague and me, we were close to going live near to the timeline of March, but that is really, it's, it's farther in the, fu- in the future. So we will be uh, talking more about the challenges that now include those organizational challenges. And we absolutely understand it's something that um, we might not give out to the customer, but we are thinking of a pivot using it internally, which is, uh, which is perfectly fine. So customers calling in, having customer care operators at the, at the phone, and those operators using and testing what would come out of a large language model. And what, what, uh, if you can answer, what kind of technology are you using? So currently we are using Microsoft Azure, um, Louis and Q&A based, and we will or plan to, to move that to the chat GPT models also on Azure by Microsoft because it's the same text. I understand. Can I ask you a, um, a strategic question? I also discussed it with, um, um, uh, uh, and a member of Par- Euro Parliament who was in- involved in um, um, in making the European AI Act. Um, I have this concern, and uh, maybe you share it, maybe maybe you don't, but I'm I'm curious. It's a strategic concern. Now, in the boardroom, you see everybody say, "Oh, we we uh, we need to do something. We need to experiment. We need to learn." You see a lot of companies pivoting pivoting from external. Let's try internal for HR or other applications, which makes perfect sense, and I I totally agree. Let's mm-hmm. first understand, and mm-hmm. and uh, and if it goes wrong internally, we it's it's okay. If it's externally, we we're, we have a shit storm. Now, the my concern is is that what we see is uh, the three, or actually maybe a little bit more, but at least three big tech companies: Microsoft uh, with OpenAI and Azure, uh, uh, AWS, um, and uh, Alphabet, uh, Google. They are mm-hmm. pushing their cloud computing. And their uh, AI in combination, because and I recently it was in the news that these big tech companies make their huge profits on the cloud computing. That's where mm-hmm. the, the big box is. So they have a vested interest to push AI. Now, that that's not in itself a problem, but the problem uh, uh, arises that uh, they create it in such a way that the barrier to exit. Mm-hmm. So to if you were to change to another model. And the way they, they want you to do it, and I've seen a couple of examples, is so high that um, eventually they control your cost base. Because what happens if you are successful? That means you need less stuff eventually. Uh, or the roles of stuff change, or you're fully scalable, you can do more sales and more back office work with the same amount of stuff. So uh, whichever way you, you tune it, um, they control a large part of your cost base. And that in itself is a strategic risk. Uh, and I don't see it assessed everywhere. Uh, people say, oh, we, let's do it with Azure, Microsoft, because we are already there. Um, and it makes perfect sense from an IT perspective. Mm-hmm. But from a strategic perspective, um, if I would be in the board, I'd say, well, guys, um, when you do that, what is the dependency and what is the cost of change? And if it's really high, you should consider, um, I'm not saying you should not use AI, but should consider are there other options to integrate it where we are fully independent? Because what happens if OpenAI gets sued by, well, they're already being sued, and mm. they have to shut off the model, and it's in every corner of your company? Then what? Yeah, yeah. Um, I asked the question to a couple of CEOs, and they, they looked at me, it's like, 
Yeah, we didn't think about that. I said, yeah, but you have risk people. You know, didn't they ask you that question? No. And and the the knowledge level is so low. Maybe that's the, the, so little people have experience and understand what it really is. Uh, you obviously do. Um, especially when I saw your face just now when I, I, I stated this risk. So I would like to hear your opinion. Not, I understand that the, the strategic option, uh, opinion of AXA is a different thing, but how you view this risk? Do you, do you see those risks? Yeah, I absolutely agree. So that's, and, and we already had that a few years ago when we started the overall cloud transformation journey <laughs> because all, all systems here in, in insurance were in, in the cellar, in the basement, in on premise. So when we, we started that cloud transformation, we the board really had that strategic risk in mind and we, we we said we have to have a dual strategy for the tra cloud transformation. So we are moving not only with Microsoft but also in that case, it's Google as well. So we are with Google and Microsoft. Amazon wasn't an option because they are not in Switzerland, and Switzerland has to be in Switzerland. Somehow. Yeah, same as you, the rest of Europe. It has to be in Europe, not in Switzerland. Yes, absolutely. Same story. Absolutely. GDPR. GDPR, as you mentioned. It. And um, for for the, the AI journey that we are now starting with the large language models, we, we do a similar thing. So I'm sitting here for for textbot innovation, which we base on Microsoft uh, stack. And we are at the same time in other teams working on, on those voice bot experiments, and they are based on Google dialog flow so that we at least have both sides and maybe can also learn how to, how to switch, how to change, how to decouple from, from those underlying models. But that's only early concerns that we are trying to address you're the first corporate i speak to okay and, and my my compliments kudos that actually uh, when starting had this as a concern and mm -hmm. uh well of course for the, the cloud compute if you come from a basement with servers i, I understand the, the fear uh what i see happening is that um the cost of cloud computing is is going to be rising the the coming period and then eventually companies are going back to okay i need a basic uh amount of servers in my basement and I mm -hmm. need to scale up uh, with cloud computing. So, that, and I already heard companies saying, okay, uh, we are losing control um, mm -hmm. uh, cost-wise, but also um, where things are going. And when you add AI to that, it, it becomes even bigger and riskier, um, especially if it's in the same realm. Because what if someone cuts the, and which was now a threat uh, by the Houthis, what if someone cuts the internet cables? Are we Absolutely. then operated to function? Um, yeah. uh, you can't. Um, well, it, it will be taken over. But if they do it at different places at the same time, we're, we're, we're in trouble. Um, so that, I see that strategic narrative changing. Uh, but you're the first one that actually from, uh, from a chatbot uh, AI perspective takes two roads. And, and, and I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually coming down really from the board. I mean, uh, Swiss people are known for their risk aversion say, risk aversion that's why insurance is working so well in switzerland because everyone wants to but to the germans are also good at that right? yeah that's true that's true. that's why you build such good machines and cars. <laughs> no it's it's it, it's based on the same principle yeah i, I, I mean it that's in true. a positive way yeah, by the way it's not a it's not a it wasn't a cynical or something it was, no, it was a serious right. remark um so and so that, uh, we and another con I, I mean that was top down and bottom up from uh, starting within our team we um we knew that we had to do innovation on on a on a niche so to speak so we we selected niche use cases from the beginning we didn't aim for the big big ones because there's huge programs and portfolio projects underway too big, over to, years. too big to fail too big uh, and failing, no, not failing, but uh, too big and coming too late for, for fast innovation. So that's why we didn't aim for the claims uh, touch point, which is the most important one, of course, for our customer. We didn't aim for other huge, uh, huge products underway, but for niche use cases, which are some tiny little use cases that are used via, still via telephone mainly, or were used, and that can be replaced by a small chatbot that doesn't 
Um, I mean, it's it's a good bet to 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 digitalize further, but it's not destroying anything if it doesn't work out as fast and uh, as as we assume it should happen. From, it's from a, an it's innovation a, perspective, it's a safe way to to innovate, but yes. at the same time, you 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 have the space to prove a business case that, that there is actually yes. something there, and that's the way to. Uh, it's like an um, it's like a ripple in the ocean, you know, that you start small and then it becomes bigger and eventually becomes yeah. well, hopefully not, but a tsunami, uh, a big in, wave. In that case, yeah, hopefully it becomes a big ripple uh, sooner or later, as soon as all organizational and technical um, okay. hurdles are. And, 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 uh, yeah, I, I totally understand. That makes perfect sense, and uh, I think it's a good strategic is- approach. And also, how did you put the team together? I mean, and and did you hire external consultants or um, only internal people? So the team itself is a is a team as it was doing other sorts of innovation in the past. So ten years ago, uh, mobile apps on your smartphone were the new thing, which were I mean, no one believed in in mobile apps for insurance because it's it's a very it's a low interest product. There's only few touch points per year, but then this only thing if something goes succeeded. wrong. It's it's actually a negative. You, you have to make something positive out of a negative experience. Absolutely, and and we are uh, then or we were experimenting also with other conversational user interfaces. So social messaging is a big. Big thing. Our customers are on WhatsApp. They are on Apple, Apple Chat or Apple uh, Business Messaging. We offered that a few years ago. And then the next step really was, uh, why not greet them with a chatbot on WhatsApp? We thought yeah. that back then, up to now, we are not on WhatsApp yet. Only on D- our data website. wise, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense on one hand. <laughs> on the no. other hand, everything is end to end encrypted. So it's it's only a transfer medium, yeah, which is much let, better than email. Harald, let me um, <laughs> let me say this about end-to-end encryption. Um, it, it might feel safe. Uh, it's not as safe as we think because we don't know. Yes. We, listen, what we do, we back up our conversations, right? Do you have any idea if you have an iPhone or an Android phone? Do you have any idea where it goes? No. But well, I have an iPhone, get... and I trust Apple. What's on your iPhone stays on your iPhone. But no, well, you're right. You're absolutely right. But it's it's it's. I mean, it was much more critical when we we allowed incoming emails unencrypted with attachments, I, uh, with I personal agree. data, and so on. So I agree. I, I made a funny joke. Uh, I talked to the CEO and um, I asked him. I was like, "Oh, do you give your uh, employees a company phone?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Yeah, the, the newest of the news. Oh, I said with facial recognition and uh, or a finger mm. a fingerprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. And I said, oh, oh do you know where that personal um, bio uh, uh, information goes? It's like, what do you mean? I said, well, does it stay on the phone or go to the cloud? Oh, I don't know. I said, well, that's data of your staff. You you should know. Nobody asked. He, he like turned all bell. It's like I think I oh need God. to ask someone uh, <laughs> what a policy is in that. And the, the, the whole point is n- nobody knows. And it's actually at a this is an interesting part, but it's a, at a crossover of uh, GDPR and uh, the European AI Act because there's there's algorithms behind it. So uh, and, and machine learning. So the, the interesting part we're, we're going into an era where literally nobody knows yet what, what you know what, what we're up against and that's a positive thing because there's space for innovation um, but that a negative thing companies that are really have really been pushing forward might be at risk that they have to change a lot uh, in mm-hmm. order to comply mm-hmm. um, and one other question did you hire external consultants in the process uh, yeah that was the second part of the question we do have external consultants uh, up to an extent so we are actually really an agile a development team, which is comprised of, of business people like me, so I'm a user experience uh, specialist, and my colleagues are developers or other business analysts. So we are between what we call DTI, which is our IT department, data technology and innovation, and uh, in our case, distribution, so business ownership with distribution, and we try to, to hire external consultants, um, but only up to a degree and, and keeping the, the knowledge internally. 
I'm, I'm glad right, to hear that. that. But you need you need both. But build yes. a team with the knowledge, and use external consultants to enrich the, that that knowledge and get you over the hurdles that sometimes are just so difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, you just need someone who already took that hurdle in another project. Um, and 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 another, and that's one of the last questions. Um, how did you, or or you, your you and your team, how did you guys manage to convince the board? Uh, about what you needed. I mean, you, you need X. It doesn't matter. I, I don't care about the amount, but you, you need uh, to direct the staff at at the project. So that that is also a cost because um, you're not doing something else, mm -hmm. and you need money for the the technical stuff um, and and uh, and the experimenting. So how did you? Uh, not so much for a year, but the long term uh, security of the budgeting. Uh, so. The board. We don't have the long-term budgeting yet, so <laughs> that hurdle isn't taken. But during the last four years, it was really starting small and and growing below the below the line. So there's not okay. there is visibility, but it's it's only a small experiment. But then we are on the homepage. It's it's I mean it's available for for all of Switzerland, German speaking. So we, we just managed to, to grow in those niche use cases up to the point that we are. So um, in the beginning, we had a strategic or we still have a strategic partnership with Microsoft. We also have those partnerships with Google. So they came in with consultants that were for free because they want to sell their stuff. Azure <laughs> data usage in the future. But so it wasn't uh, very difficult to convince our uh, management to to go forward those small steps up to this uh, point. Very interesting. Well, I hope they that you get to achieve that. They they see the benefit of all this and uh, um, understand that this, at speed at which you can develop it, it it's it's uh, a it's the hockey stick. It goes faster and faster, uh, and it be, then it becomes cheaper and cheaper um, if if done well. So so I'm I'm, I'm really looking forward to what you guys are going to achieve uh, as the next steps. So uh, if if you would like to, if you have next steps and and they're, they're, you think they're interesting, come back on the show and we'll do a long podcast about it and and, uh, and share it with the uh, with the community. Uh, one last question, final question. If if you would give a message to uh, a supporting message to to people in the community that are working in a large corporation and wanting to start to experiment with. Uh, conversational AI supported by large language models. What would you tell them? What would be your advice? Um, that former claim of, of Nike comes to my mind. Just do it. Try to <laughs> try to not accept no. Move forward in in small steps and and well, if you if you fail, stand up and 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 move on. And uh, hopefully you're lucky in an organization where there is time for innovation, where there is a 20% rule or something similar to what Google has, uh, working on those projects, never give up because, yeah, the future is already here. It's, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> you should well, be part of it. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I agree. Well, looking forward to, to seeing each other in uh, Edinburgh. And thank you very much, Harald. Uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully we, we meet again in the, in the next podcast. Yes, sure. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Bye.